Hi, I'm Mark Jenkins, author of the book Analog Synthesizers, and at the moment I'm working on my new concerts in the UK in Birmingham Science Museum on November the 26th, and in the USA in March 2012. And one of the new apps I'm going to be taking with me is the first polyphonic synthesizer in software form by Moog, and this is Animoog. What does it sound like? Well, as you'd expect, it sounds a bit like the classic Mini Moog. Although, as you can see on that uh, quite complex display, there's a lot more going on than a simple analog monophonic synthesizer. Let's have a look at this default sound. As you'd expect, it's uh, quite a big thick analog sound and the first thing people are going to want to know is has it got the typical Moog filter. On this default sound the filter is set to low pass which is what you'd find on a mini Moog so let's have a listen. So quite a powerful low pass filter effect. We're going to turn up the resonance now and see what it sounds like. So just what you'd expect of a uh, classic Moog low pass filter, just a tiny tiny bit steppy at high resonance you can hear that the uh, emphasised pitch moves down slightly in steps. which is typical of a digital implementation as opposed to a fully analog one. But as we see the uh, power of this uh, iPad app, I think we'll get away with that. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at the main display on Animoog. The first thing you'll notice is the large oscilloscope type display on the top left. And the second thing you'll notice is that the keyboard doesn't look like a conventional black and white keyboard. Uh, in fact, all the keys aren't there. It's a little bit more similar to what you find in physical form on the Buchler synthesizers, in that it offers you some modulation as you move up and down the key, like this. So you've got uh, added dimension of modulation there so you don't need a modulation wheel although uh, as you'll see we can have one if we want one and also you don't have to have a conventional western scale uh, you can have pentatonic and other scales with only certain keys switched on but of course you can have the uh, full western 12 note scale as well what else is going on on the oscilloscope <laughs> Well, as you can see, there's a waveform display in the centre, but there's also a moving modulation display. Uh, this is part of what Mo calls the anisotropic synthesizer design, and we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail. Then over to the other side of the screen, much more conventional uh, module designs. The ones that we can see are the filter module, which gives low-pass, band-pass and high-pass filter settings, uh, together with their... Uh, frequency and resonance and uh, drive and envelope level. The other module uh, visible there is called Thick and it controls the unison and detune of the sounds but there are other modules uh, hidden above and below them we'll look at those in a moment. Let's just quickly look first at some alternative sounds so here's the default and to get another one you simply hit preset and we'll choose Delta Goblins and see what that sounds like. Again, this complex display uh, showing you the modulation that's going on in the sound. We'll have a look at that in more detail in a moment. Turning first to that all-important filter module, we'll just have a quick look at what you get when you uh, alter the filter settings as you're playing. So 
So plenty of convincing filter sounds there, and as you can hear, there's a built-in digital delay as well. Here's where we get a little more complicated, and we look at why this is called an anisotropic synth. Uh, this is to do with the way that modulation uh, is given to you on this oscilloscope display. So we now switch out of the filter module to the orbit module. And the orbit is the way in which modulation moves during the course of a note. Here's a, um, a sync-based sound. And what we see there is just the basic waveform of the sound. But I'm now going to add some modulation of the sync, and I'm going to make this go up and down in the X direction. So you can see the uh, moving display uh, left to right in the X direction, changing the amount of sync. And we'll now have a look at the Y modulation up and down. So that's two types of modulation, and if you put both in at once, you start to get an orbit. Of course, you can move the center point of the orbit. And you can change the speed of the orbit. So by using these automated orbits of modulation, uh, you can give yourself an additional LFO, and you can also go uh, far from the uh, conventional musical sounds into something a lot more experimental. Okay, so here's another sound with a simple orbit of modulation. But it's more complicated than that, because above the orbit module, you have another module called path and this allows you to make the modulation follow points which you define and set yourself. So we'll now see uh, the center of the orbit moving according to those points. This is loop mode for the path. You can also go to back and forth mode. So obviously that uh, follows the path forwards and then backwards. Or you can have a mode that's called once, which uh, in other software will be called one shot. So it's followed your path once, and then it continues to orbit along the last point. Now these orbits and paths of modulation can look quite simple. But as you speed them up, they can become fantastically complicated. And of course you end up with displays for sounds which look fantastically complicated with one note. But as we mentioned the Animog is polyphonic and you can get more than one note playing. As you can see, we had uh, two orbits going there, a pink and orange one, and you can get up to four playing simultaneously. <laughs> now, these facilities aren't unique by any means. There's many types of software uh, which offers this type of multi-stage envelopes and multiple modulation. 
but I think uh, Annie Mo gives it to you in uh, a nice accessible way and let's just have a look at a couple of more conventional sounds So plenty of uh, simple conventional synth sounds there. Let's just have a look at the keyboard scaling, which in this case is set to give you the full chromatic scale of 12 notes, but you can punch out any notes you wish to make your own scales. And there's a huge selection of other scales available, mixolydian, uh, major and minor blues, diminished, major and minor pentatonic, Egyptian and so on. You can also switch the keyboard to mono and put the legato or glide mode on and off. And you can change the note which doesn't have to be C, it can be C sharp, D, D sharp and so on. OK, we'll now go out of the main XY pad display showing this uh, simple polyphonic horn-like sound with a very basic uh, sawtooth waveform and we go into the envelope modulation page which of course is uh, basic to uh, making new synthesizer sounds. Here's the uh, amplifier envelope as you'd expect and it's easy to lengthen the attack there so you get a slow fade in. or to shorten it. And the same with what the filter is doing. And you also have an uh, envelope for modulation depths. But before we see how that works, you'll have to note that there's a lot of modulation possibilities. There's actually four types of modulation which can be set, one to four. Each one can have a source, a control level, and a destination. The sources can be uh, the LFO modulation level, uh, position X and position Y on the pad. Uh, the controls are polyphonic pressure, which uh, applies over MIDI, uh, and among others, velocity, mod wheel, pitch bend. And the destinations is an even more extensive list. The uh, filter frequency and resonance, uh, filter amount, uh, the orbit speed, X or Y level of the orbit, uh, LFO speed and many other things. There's only one LFO however, so you'll be using uh, orbits to uh, give other types of modulation. And the LFO has five shapes which the last one is sample and hold or random. So let's do a quick job of setting some modulation options. We'll set the source to LFO. We'll set the uh, controller to poly pressure, which is represented by moving your finger up a key. And we'll set the uh, destination to filter frequency. So uh, with the LFO on sample and hold, we should now get a random modulated sound. And here it comes. As you move your finger up. Alternatively, you can set that uh, controller to mod wheel and in setup, switch on the pitch bend and mod wheel and you get on the mod wheel instead. Nice to have a choice of uh, whether you use the mod wheel and pitch bend or not. Since we're on the setup page, we'll just have a, a quick look at the simple options here. 
which are to do with making a new preset sound, deleting one, importing them, exporting them, switching the uh, modulation and pitch bend on and off, switching the oscilloscope display on and off, and a panic button and a save. There's also some uh, MIDI facilities here, of course the uh, app works uh, polyphonically off a MIDI keyboard. Finally starting once again the XY pad will switch and go out to the Tamblers page. Down the right hand side you have a wide choice of waveforms and that covers all the usual analog stuff and a lot of more digital sounding waveforms. And you're able to make a choice of your eight favourites on the left hand side. Mm. So let's have um, descending even in there mm. and a digital noise mm. in there and uh, distorted primes in there. So we can now look at this uh, table of eight waveforms to play with. And although they're basic uh, single waveforms, they do allow the Animoog to make a lot of digital type noises, so it's by no means limited to analog. Let's just look at these final modules on the right hand side. The delay is uh, obvious enough. It's an analog style delay with uh, length and feedback. We've been listening to that delay on most of these sounds. Above that is the uh, thickness module. It allows you to choose unison modes and detune for the sounds. Again on most of these sounds we've been listening to a couple of voices detuned. And of course it thickens up the sounds. Uh, there's also uh, overdrive and crush levels which can give them a bit of distortion. And lastly the record function which is a simple real-time sequencer. Hit record and play a few notes. And play back. So finally let's have a look at some of the beautiful sounds of the Animoog and those beautiful displays. This one's called Skyline. Too many harmonics. Unison pad. Space hammers. Sample and hold forever. Thank <laughs> you. 
So you'll be wanting to know if Andy Moog works with uh, an external MIDI keyboard. Here it is with the Evolution E keys. As you can see in the setup page, it's det detected USB MIDI keyboard. <laughs> Let's have a couple more of the uh, polyphonic sounds using the keyboard. So we've been looking at Animoog, the first polyphonic software synthesizer app by Moog. I like it a lot, I like the combination of classic Moog analog sounds with a lot more digital and wavetable uh, type effects. Uh, I like the touch sensitive keyboard and uh, the way that you can choose alternative scales, not just the 12 note scale. Uh, it's a little slow picking new sounds, but I think combined with a MIDI keyboard, maybe with a MIDI patch change, that'll be a little faster. And of course this will be a fantastic uh, combination with a keyboard as a sound module for on-stage use. Uh, fantastically inexpensive to purchase in the first 30 days, and still a bargain even after that. So uh, I like Animoog a lot. I'll be taking it out to play in my concerts in Birmingham in the UK, Saturday, November the 26th, in the Think Tank Science Museum, uh, with their full dome digital planetarium display, which looks fantastic with a bit of synthesizer music playing. And I'll also be in the USA for shows on the East Coast in March 2012. So my name is Mark Jenkins. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about Animoog as much as I enjoyed playing it.